I have some homework to do. The last week in a sketchbook school's course Polishing is taught by Juliana Coles and she shows us how to make illustrated journal pages in a whole new way. Um, I am kind of nervous because it's way out of my comfort zone, but I like that. Um, Juliana is quite the collector of things. She, uh, she collects textures and, 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 and papers and things out of magazines and photos. And I'm not a collector, I'm a throwawayer, is that a word? Um, so I don't have any of those things, but I do have a sketchbook page that I really would like to spice up. So I'll just dig into my art supplies find myself some colors and some paint and um, just start that process. Now Juliana uh, encourages us to um, keep coming back to our journal pages uh, so I can only show you the start of this process. Um, I'm excited, let's give it a go. Okay, so this is my current sketchbook in which I don't quite like the first page. I remember as soon as I put the first lines down for that drawing, this was not going to be a super great drawing, but once I added hatching and some color, it was all right. However, I like the idea of getting back to it now to revamp it. I found some great stuff in my drawers, art supplies I hardly ever use too. So let's play. I'll start with writing down my thoughts like Juliana does in her demo. Because I know this will be one of many layers, I don't really think about what I write. Just some thoughts about the beginning of a new sketchbook. It's nice to just write. I don't even do my best to make it look neat. Now it's time for the next step, the emphasizing. So I circle some of the words I think are important or meaningful and use alphabet letter stamps as well. These ones work a lot better on top of the writing, so I'll go over that first word again with black this time. And add more stamped words. Now I really want to paint. I mix yellow and white, which feels quite safe, so I won't be afraid I make rookie mistakes with a super bright or dark color, and then I couldn't go back and feel awful about it. I like how the acrylic paint can be applied both thick and thin, wet by adding water or a bit drier straight from the tube. It's nice how some of the background color still is visible below the paint layer. At first it feels kind of strange to paint over something I just wrote, but that feeling just lasts for a few seconds. I'm on a mission now. Once I have that first light layer in, I dare to go for some bright yellow as well. When I watched the demo, I thought, how does she work that magic? How does she decide where to put all the elements? Now I discover that basically you need to just keep looking at the page to see where you need to bring balance by adding color. I don't have any colored or patterned paper or anything like that, but I do have all kinds of washi tape, so that might be nice to use. I'll give it a try. Here's a bit of an empty space. And since the original drawing had blue in it, I'll use this dotted blue tape. And I like the warm colors, but it can also use some extra brightness. So here's an almost fluorescent orange that could kind of connect the two pages of the spread. I'll add a small bit to the right page and one to the left as well for balance. We've seen Felix Scheinberger do this too in expressing. Oh, and I accidentally went through that wet layer of paint with my nail, but I kind of like that effect. so. I'll do more of that. And then I just wipe off my nail here at the other side of the spread. Looks nice. I forgot I had these two fluorescent colors and I totally want to use at least one of these now. Ooh, that is brighter than bright. 
But if I add more of it throughout the page, it might work. Now, let's add some of that ink I haven't touched since Jonathan Twingley's class, shame on me. No planning, just dropping some ink splatters. Well, that seems kind of bloody. Let's dab that with a kitchen towel. Ooh, I kind of like how that stamps the colors with a bit of texture from the paper towel. The face now is awfully white, so back to paint again. Again, bringing the balance by adding dark now. Ooh, and I have this silver sharpie. Let's see if it works to outline some of the lettering. Nope, that obviously doesn't work. I'll fill the letters with white then. Why? Because I can. I'm also going to trace these stamp letters. Now I want some of that fluorescent green acrylic paint in there. I'll dilute it with some water so I can make paint splatters with it. Adding some fingerprints. Man, I am having fun! Maybe I can use a stamp pad for coloring too. Oh, this one doesn't do much, it's dried out. No surprise there, it's been sitting in my drawer for years, untouched. Try this blue one then. It's also kind of dried out, but I like the soft coloring. I'll use more of those coloring pads for some fingerprints. The fun thing about this process is that nothing you do has a huge impact, but it all adds up and builds up to something that is so funky. Since I used black for those stamp letters, I may want to add a few black lines. I'll try Noodler's ink, which is not too dark and dense. Those darker bits now seem a bit too much, so I'll dab them away. This needs text, lettering. I'll add a quote by Gottfried Bomans, who was a Dutch writer. De kunst van te leven is thuis te zijn alsof men op reis is. Which translates to something like The art of living is to be home like you were traveling. Now I use one of those thick red pencils like Sabine Wisman uses in expressing to add some lines and some weight here and there. Wherever it feels right, I add red. Back to that silver sharpie again. I think it could work on the white lettering here. Interesting enough, here it does work. I also add the name of the author, just tiny, in white, below. And now all I want to do is add some bits and pieces, some colorful stuff to make it all look balanced, look right, and uh, just because I don't want to stop yet. Yeah, I feel like I'm done, for now.